6 and 7. Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. I grew up in the city of Lockport, the middle, middle child of five. I had two brothers and two sisters, about six years apart from the oldest to the youngest sibling. Uh, family life was always busy in my house with sports, summer jobs, which meant lef leftovers most of the time. <clears throat> Occasionally, my mom would bring us to church and Sunday school at, at Lockport Christian Alliance. Love was certainly present in our home, but we were not following God, and sin was certainly present as alcohol abuse and gambling were frequent. Accidents, trauma, and trauma in my family were also frequent growing up. At the age of four, I was run over by a small lawn tractor while playing with my buddies in the backwoods. Nearly every bone in both of my feet crushed, and part of my right calf lopped off. It's a long story, but the scar that covers my calf is a reminder, a reminder of how thankful I am to have both of my legs. At age seven, I was struck by a Ford Bronco while walking my bike across the street. I flew 100 feet and hit a fire hydrant. I was flown by Mercy Flight to the hospital, woke up two days later with only a severe headache and some disorientation from what my mom said. When I was about 10 years old, my youngest sister, who was three, was run over by a car in front of our house. She spent three or four months recovering in the hospital until her legs were healed. And I still have that memory in my head uh, of pins holding her legs together as, as, as she lay in the hospital bed as a toddler. Um, you know, maybe it was neglect, maybe just bad luck. But the memories of my mom driving me drunk to hockey practices, games, and the feeling of relief getting to my destination safe, despite hitting curbs and dodging parked cars along the way. I wasn't thanking God for protecting me in those moments because I didn't know him. By the age of 12, I learned how to wax money and count poker chips for the regular card nights that were held in our home, what a gentleman's club was like, and the consequences of shoplifting. Over time, the love and abuse of money began to destroy our family life, so much so that my dad, when he retired from his from his uh, 20 years as a firefighter, decided, decided to move out west to none other than Las Vegas. Um, there, there we would be close to my grandparents and close to the Vegas Strip. I didn't want to leave my friends. That summer in Vegas was miserable. I already missed my friends and my teammates and was afraid to begin a new school year in an unfamiliar place. My first week of school there was horrible. I felt out of place with my peers and teachers, I had begged my parents to allow me to move back to, to Lockport. And with some convincing, they actually agreed to let me go. I packed all of my belongings, my hockey stick, and got a one-way Greyhound ticket back to Western New York. That four days on the Greyhound bus was lonely and scary. I, I still did not have, yet have a personal relationship with Christ, so, um, so I wasn't asking him to protect me through those times. Although someone must have been praying, but I didn't care. I was headed for home and that was my goal. Uh, when I made it back to Lockport, I lived with my hockey coach for a few months. He taught me how to drive, prioritize my schoolwork, take care of a home, and he and his wife taught me so many great things for which I will forever be grateful. By this time, my life was turning around. My parents and I were convinced that my moving back to Lockport was the right decision. Fast forward to my senior year in high school. During that time, I was living with my oldest sister. We shared an apartment. I had no, uh, no supervision, rules, boundaries. This led to, to bad choices, including the friends that I was hanging around. Some of those choices I was making affected my, my grades and my priorities. In the fall of 97, I needed some extra cash, so I took on a seasonal job at the Lockport Caves. Of the many jobs I had during this time to support my f myself, this job was actually really fun. I was very motivated to go to work in the evenings and on the weekends because there was a girl who was one of the tour guides named Lindsay. I got her number and we began dating in October of 97. By the grace of God in 98, I graduated high school. It was the same year that my parents', my parents marriage ended. This was very tough on my brothers and sisters, especially the younger ones. 
my relationship with God was still non-existent. Otherwise, maybe I could have helped. Lindsay and I began spending a lot of time together. As our relationship grew, her family became my family. I spent the holidays with them, attended church with her family. It was during these years that seeds were being planted. God was working in my heart. When Lindsay graduated and moved to Buffalo to attend college, I needed to find my calling. So I decided to move to Buffalo with friends and to be closer to Lindsay. While working at a call center, collections agency at the time, a, a friend of mine had just finished college and got a job as a life insurance representative, financial advisor. He loved it and encouraged me to get my licenses and try it out. And it seemed in line with what I, I thought about choosing as a career path. Little did I know that Mutual of Omaha would be the company that I would spend the next 18 years with. I learned so much from the people there. At age 20, I still had no relationship with Christ. I believed in God and Jesus, but I was still doing life my way. In 2005, at the age of 25, Lindsay and I were married uh, right here at First Trinity, right there by Pastor Chuck. Uh, and two years later, Sammy was born. As a family, we attended Trinity Lutheran Church in Lockport. It was there that I, that I was encouraged to learn more about my faith and Jesus. Pastor Alan Bauck mentored me there and encouraged me to get baptized. On October 25th, 2009, Reformation Sunday, I was baptized. It was a special day for all of us. From there, my relationship with Christ grew. Lewis was born that December and our family was complete. As I entered this next season of life, leading my family as a, as a husband and now father, my motivation suddenly changed. My boys needed a leader, a protector, a teacher, a role model, but most, most importantly, a father who loved them and would devote time in raising them up in God's way. As a young guy, still early in my faith walk, I had a destination, a goal in how I wanted to raise my children, but I still had much learning to be done and many, many mistakes and bad choices were, were certainly made along the way. As a new father, I now had a profound respect for my father and the weight of the responsibility that all fathers bear. Deep down, I, as fathers, I believe we all have a sense of, uh, of wanting our children to have it better than we did. We don't want that, them to have to go through the same struggles as we did. So the, the Lord was certainly working on my heart through this experience as each of our children were born. This was a major turning point in my life. I was comforted and so fortunate to have such a strong woman by my side, a passionate follower of Christ, and a wonderful mother because of it. <sighs> Sorry. The Lord then led our family to Holy Cross in Clarence through a Moms of Preschoolers group that Lindsay attended. We soon started getting involved, serving in Sunday school, Lindsay in the, in the worship band, and myself on the council. It was through this time that I started to bond with other Christian men at the church. We loved our church family, many camping trips together and backyard gatherings. There was a men's group called Hebrews uh, that met on the third Thursday of each month. It was founded a few years prior uh, by some, uh, a few of the guys that were just sharing God's word and fellowship while home brewing their own beer, hence the name He Brew. This is where I met a great group of men I am now lucky enough to call my brothers in Christ. We still meet to this day and actually celebrated St. Patrick's Day together just last Thursday. Most are from Holy Cross, some from St. Paul's, and, and some from uh, no church at all. One fellow in particular I have become very good friends with over the years. We taught Sunday school at Holy Cross together, and I remember how much I would learn from him each week. The Lord put him in my life for good reason. His love for the Lord is so clear and direct. He has introduced me to so much of God's word and opened my eyes. He has become a faithful Christian brother that continues to encourage me in my faith walk. It was through this friendship that I developed a love for Christian music we went to Kingdom Bound one year with the, the high school group, and that was it. We would then frequent Third Day and, and Need to Breathe and Brothers McClure, to name a few. I love all kinds of music, but I find it really difficult now to listen to anything but Christian music. I guess I, guess I never really listened to the words. 
and now I do. This, through this, I believe God was again planting seeds in my life and cleansing my heart of all the pollution and subsequent sin that I would invite in. Written in the Gospel of Matthew, um, what flows from the man's mouth reveals his heart. And I think it's in Proverbs and probably many other books in the Bible. But inviting Christian music into my life, I believe now was a part of this cleansing process. And about 10 years ago or so, a few of our Hebrew brothers, some of which are our pastors, started a weekly Bible study. We usually talk every Tuesday night. We started, the, started with the Bible in a year, and we've gone through several Old Testament, New Testament uh, individual studies, and um, I became an eager student enthralled with learning the Bible, the history of the Bible, and the, and, and the history of the world. It started as a conference call, and then during COVID, we tried Zoom, and we, we haven't looked back. It's been really awesome. Technology is, is a really funny thing, and, and when you sometimes embracing our circumstances create unique opportunities. Currently, we are studying the courageous fathers of the Bible through Concordia. The ongoing friendships we have created were and continue to be a huge factor in how I once lived my life for people and stuff to now for Christ alone. And I thank God every day for bringing those men into my life and I am extremely grateful for our friendships. Lindsay and I wanted different for our boys. The Lord continued to bless our family. As we grew in our faith, we both knew we wanted this for our sons, Sammy and Lewis. We were able to send them to Christian Central Academy, K through five, and now they continue to, to uh, attend Christian school. They are covered in God's word and prayer each day and learn the biblical truths about the world that they live in. We are so very thankful that the Lord has provided this open door for our kids. Although it takes a lot of hard work and engagement on both parent and student, Lindsay is the glue that holds us together and follows through each day. In 2018, after almost 18 years under the same company, we made a transition to move from the corporate office structure and opened our own advisory practice, now partnered with Vision Financial, a mass mutual firm. This transition came with much anxiety, but we also knew we had to trust that the Lord had a plan. A lot had happened that sparked this move, much of which I, I won't bore you with, but Lindsay had started working in our office a few years prior and now continues to manage our office now. It was also during this time that as a family we transitioned to First Trinity, mainly because we had just built a new home and now uh, we were much closer to First Trinity. But leaving our church family at Holy Cross was, was very, very difficult, something we prayed about and God provided that path. Our business continues to grow and our faith is intertwined at its center. We continue to build great relationships with our, with our clients, and many of which were, we were praying together, crying together, laughing together. Our clients know where our faith stands and this creates meaningful conversations and at times witnessing opportunities. So throughout my life, uh, there have been many struggles, hard times financially, traumatic accidents that we've had to battle through. Family life certainly wasn't perfect as a child or now as a parent. Uh, through all of this, I do believe the Lord was present. Whether his angels were protecting me during those traumatic accidents or on that bus for four days traveling across the country at age 15. He guided me into marriage and through the birth and raising of our children and continues to. The Lord planted great friends of faith into my life and that's blossomed into the strengthening of my faith and relationship with Jesus. I now understand and see that God was always there because he chose me. It was my doing, my sin, my immaturity that was rejecting his invitation into his kingdom. It was through all of these events and people that God placed in my life that has tr truly transformed my heart. He has taught me that trust in him is about placing him first and then my wife, and then my children, and then in that, in that order, and in that order. The Lord has continued to protect and bless my family abundantly, more than I could ever have dreamed of. I will be forever grateful for this. Although sin is always trying to creep in and spoil good things, allowing doubt and worry to take hold, now having the presence of Christ with me all the, all the time, and the armor of God at my side, I do not need to strive for per perfection, but only follow his direction. Living each day in his freedom, this freedom has helped me with relationships with my mom and dad, 
my brothers and sisters, all of which I am still close with. My mom, I love her dearly, despite her flaws early in life. She has come to know the Lord, and her love for Christ has also freed her from the sin that it had that stronghold. My mom and I have always had a special bond. She planted some strong seeds of God's love in my heart very early on. The person in my life that has had the most profound impact on my faith walk is my wife, Lindsay. She is the strongest person I know, the strongest woman I know, a woman that has an unwavering passion for Jesus, the way she raises our children, works in our home, the church, our business. Everything she does, she does with absolute commitment, intention, and follow through. <clears throat> this is evident in the life of our sons and who they are growing up to be. Tender hearts, filled with humility, awesome musicians, talented athletes, just good, young, healthy boys that lo lo love to run around in church. <laughs> and they know and love God, and that's what's important. So for this, I am so grateful uh, to God that he has blessed me with such a fine wife and two beautiful children. The Lord has given me his power and authority to break the cycle of gambling and alcohol abuse in my own family. I am blessed and grateful to raise my boys up in the Lord, and we are finding out that living for God is not very popular among the world and is abnormal to many, but giving my boys the armor they need to fight those temptations and evils is what I live for. And I just wanted to share my favorite story from the Bible. Um, one of my favorite stories, it's uh, the prodigal son from Luke 15, uh, otherwise known as the parable of the lost son. And it's really a story, the story has nothing to do with the son, but everything to do with the father's love for the son. Um, and I just wanted to share one last quick story, because I don't think I'd be here without the Lord. <laughs> um, it wasn't on these sheets, but uh, in 2017, on a September, September Sunday afternoon, I was driving home about a mile from my house, and um, I was coming around a curve too fast, and I went into about a six-foot ditch, and my, my truck flipped about six times, and um, when it was all done, I was laying there, not much left in my truck, but I was laying there with airbags surrounding me and uh, my car upside down and uh, the paramedics finally got there and thought they would find a dismembered person and I walked out of there unscathed um, I think I had a scrape on my on my knuckle and um, you know maybe a couple bruises on my knees and stuff but but it was, it was amazing um, what God did in that time to protect me. And I, I just had this, this little area in my car that was, that was protected. Everything else was completely demolished. So, so I, I believe my testimony points to Ephesians 2, uh, verses 1 through 10, the word, from words from Paul. And you are dead in your trespasses and sins in which you once walked following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now in work, at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy because of the, the because of the great love in which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive. Together with Christ, by grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God pre prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Amen.